Hey guys, Kalv here, and welcome back to the item database. So version 1.1 is now released and in the comments, and I'm just going to cover some of the changes since there was enough notable changes to make a video about it. So some of the quality of life improvements are shift clicking. So if you shift click on the arrows, they will take you to the absolute top or absolute bottom page. So if I shift click, it will take me to the very bottom. And if I shift click, it will take me to the very top from wherever I am. And it works the same in the database and it works the same in the recipes. Now the recipes page pages, I chose to stop, like the recipe page, I chose to stop one page before the very bottom because the very bottom technically doesn't exist. It's simply here so that if you want to make a new recipe, you can. So I take it one page before. Uh, let me turn off tooltips. So the other really cool shift click capability is being able to shift click on items in your database and having them go to their custom recipes in here. So if I go like this, it will take me to the recipe that has the golden hoe. It will also give me the golden hoe, but that's okay. And if I go like this, it'll take me to a recipe that uses the cake. So that's kind of a quick way to go to how uh, the different recipe pages for different items that you have in your database. If it doesn't have a recipe, oh, this one actually does have a recipe. If it doesn't have a recipe, then it won't do anything, but just give you the item. Uh, the other quality of life fix is this. So if I drop an item near the menu UI, near this thing, then essentially what it'll do is, yeah, it will tell you the ID and the version number. So this is ID 6 version 0. Whereas I think this thing has changed quite a bit. This is ID 2 version 14. Uh, don't worry if the version number gets really big. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it'll also give you the default ID stuff. Uh, for default items, there you go, ID negative 177, version 17B, and in this case, the version 17B has to do with the version of Minecraft it's in, so this one is version 17, if you go to 1.18, it'll say version 18. Uh, okay, so that's kind of quality of life. Now, why I did that is because, and sometimes it bugs because I threw it from the crafting menu, uh, from the inventory creative inventory but if what I, I you can do is there is now a trigger command and you can run item db get and you can just type in the number right or set and you can type in the id and you'll get that item now obviously for vanilla items that's not really useful because you can just grab them from the inventory anyways but you can use this if you want to do a slash give command without giving them something without an id so you could set player scores and the trigger only activates or it enables for creative players. Uh, so adventure, adventure mode players, you can just set their score with score mode players set. Uh, so then I could do this, the same thing with the items in the database. So this is just a good way to get items from the database that already have the database number instead of having to click them. So good for map makers uh, or people using this in with commands in conjunction with commands so that's all of the quality of life features oh there's one more and that is trigger item db menu export to command so what this does is it pops up a chest and what you have to do is f3i and it copies to your clipboard the set block command for this chest and this item in the chest is a diamond and that item contains all of the database entry stuff okay so once this is on my clipboard i can go into some kind of setup function it's just this and paste this command here, go all the way back to the top, delete this slash, and I have to change the set block coordinates to 69369. And once I change that, then, and I did this inside the setup function in the item DB, but you can do it in your own data packs in some delayed, uh, in some init function. Uh, granted, it's best to do it in this setup function because if they first install the pack, then the force load won't happen. So I really suggest just shoving it into the setup function or uh, just creating something that will trigger the setup function a second time within your own pack to uh, rerun this command here, which triggers the import. So maybe have some delay of two seconds, run your set block just so that you don't edit, because you're not supposed to edit the item DB files anyways, and then run this set block command inside yours and then you could either run this command or you could run the setup function again. Uh, but it's technically just import and you have to run it at 69.369 after this block is set. Anyways, uh, so I'm back in, I'm going to go back to the world that I just put that in. So now that I'm in the world, I typed reload 
And then if I do trigger menu, oh, trigger UI, you'll see that I have all of the items from the other world in here and all the recipes. So that's just a way to do some imports. I also went through and fixed a ton of bugs. So there was a bug associated with crafting um, and you losing items because your inventory is full. There was a bug with literally just opening any chest and the item DB just not working properly. Uh, so I would just open a container and it would have some default items in it and it just there's a cat around here and it just wouldn't work uh, properly. So I fixed that and there was also a bug a couple other bugs that I fixed. There's still a bug that I'm trying to figure out why it happens related to pink shulker boxes where it just turns all your items into pink shulker boxes. Um, but I think that it's something out of my control related to like how long it takes the game to load the pink shulker boxes loot table that might be associated. So I'll, maybe I have to enact some kind of a long delay uh, when the pack is loading before it starts running some commands that use the pink shulker boxes loot table because it's a big loot table. Um, but anyways, guys, that's just kind of my current development on the pack. If you liked it, please leave a like. The download will be in the description to a GitHub. It is going to be the new location for this where you'll be able to see kind of the version history. So this will say version 1.1 and there'll be a couple different versions and you can see what my notes are for the versions. Uh, although since it's a GitHub page, you're going to have to download it by going like this. You download the zip and then it'll have a zip file. And the problem here is the zip file will have a folder and you could just drag this folder into your data pack. But of course the most efficient way would be to use a zip. So you would have to um, pull this folder onto your desktop and then zip the components inside the folder. So I'll do that really quickly with you. So pull this onto the desktop. This would be, this would work if you just threw this in your world, but it's going to load faster if you send this to a zip. So if you send all those stuff into a zip, now you'll have the, the proper format for the data pack, just like that. And this will work if you throw this into your world. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.